I'm going to do some verbal announcements before we get started, and I'll hand over the mic to Pastor so he can uh, lead us in prayer and open up the service uh, for the word. And next week on uh, March 16th, we're going to be taking a special birthday love offering for our very own Pastor Linda. Amen. Uh, we want to show her how much we love and appreciate her for everything she does and, and, and just uh, by uh, helping, helping the man of God uh, carry out the vision and the house. Amen. That means a lot to all of us. And um, so we say that to have you pray and see how the Lord will have you be a blessing to her. So next Sunday, amen. Okay, on uh, March, uh, our March Youth Night will be on Friday, March 29th, here at DCCI at 7 p.m. And while it's for youth, all are invited, so we want you to come out. Um, uh, Brother Sam and his band is going to be uh, uh, ministering to us in praise and worship uh, for that evening. So come out and be blessed, amen. Bring somebody with you, and let's have a good time with the youth. Um, Teacher Cecil asked me to, to announce to everybody and remind everybody that our C's Candy Fundraiser, F-U-N Fundraiser, is happening right now. And, and it, it's starting off kind of slow, so we need to get behind uh, uh, Teacher Cecil and, 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 the, and the children's ministry because uh, that whole department leads all of our BVS. Uh, they don't. They don't ask anything from anybody. All they do is the fundraiser, and she. She and her team uh, lead the whole BVS efforts in the summer for for the youth around the neighborhood. So let's get behind them. Let's be a blessing. Amen. Go out and see her after in the foyer, and and let's see how we can be a blessing to her for the seeds candy. I know some. A lot of people have already taken um, sheets, and 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 will turn in the orders. So the rest of us, let's go and see uh, teacher Cecil. Amen. Okay, Pastor. <laughs> Praise the Lord. How are you this morning? Let's pray. It looks like a lot of people got caught up on the time thing. Huh? If you're Hispanic, it doesn't matter how much the time changes. We have our own time. We are on Mexican time. We... Oh, the boco se beste sarana. Hallelujah. Look around, make sure nobody's standing by themselves. If you see anybody standing by themselves, bring them in, pull them in, pull them in. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes. Yes, Lord.
Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. there's such a spirit of peace coming into this house that peace that surpasses all a man's understanding there's joy coming into this house this morning the very source of our strength there's compassion and mercy moving in this house this morning grace is always present they follow me all the days of my life thank you for that person whose hand I'm holding on my left and on my right father thank you for them I I pray for them I intercede for them but but Lord I want them to know that this morning they're holding the hand of a miracle I'm a miracle. I want them to know that this morning they're holding the hand of a Lazarus. For I was dead in my sin and you brought me to life. And I want them to know that this morning they're holding the hand of one that lived in darkness. But I've been transferred into your marvelous light. I want them to know who I am and whose I am. Bless the one on my left, Father. Bless that one on my right. Give them peace. Let their faith rise up and start believing for bigger things, Father. For you are a much bigger God than they believe that you are. Reveal yourself to them in a supernatural way and change their lives radically. We cancel every demonic assignment over this service father every single distraction is canceled father in the name of jesus we thank you for the warring angels that are flying around this place making sure that your perfect will is done thank you we thank you we thank you for the anointing of our guest speaker the message that you've brought father and you've brought him all the way here to deliver that word to us we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do not be seated until you hug that one on your left and on your right, please.
how are you this morning? Oh, that didn't, that didn't sound too good. So it's one hour sleep, so what? It didn't bother, it used to bother me when they used to say, last call. One hour of sleep, come on, you can go home and sleep an hour afterwards. Amen. It's so good to be here with you. So let's try that again. How are you this morning? That's a church I know. That's a distant community I know. I'm excited this morning to present to you uh, one of my dear friends um, has come to us all the way from Cleveland, Texas. No, 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 no. Don't be too excited because, because I, I've got a little bone I need to. I know he saved my life one time. I don't know if you all know, but we, were, we went horseback riding when I went to minister out there. And, uh, and he saved my life because I was falling off that horse. It was scary. And he ran and he unplugged it from the wall. And, and so he saved my life. I, 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 I'm, it, was a tar, it was a target. And, and, and so he saved my life. But, but he calls me a barely Texan. Uh, I, I, a barely Texan. So one day I asked him, what, what is, why am I a barely Texan? He says, brother, you barely slid into El Paso. You know, it's, it's California, Mexico, uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico, and then El Paso. So it's the first city you hit coming that way into Texas. He said, I barely slid in. God forgive them for some people do not know what they say. Yeah. I love this man. I love their ministry. Him and Pastor Frida, Sister Frida, have a tremendous ministry, a tremendous church, Liberty Christian Church Fellowship there in Cleveland, Texas. And um, it is a place where the Texas Longhorns are tolerated, but you've got to be an Aggie fan to sense the move of the Holy Ghost in that church. And, and, and you, know, you know, I'm kidding. But I, I love this man. I, I love his ministry. I love his church. I love his family. And I love his spirit. Would you please stand and help me welcome this morning my friend and your friend, Pastor Bob White. Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. I am glad to be here. Welcome from the great state of Texas. Texas, our Texas. All hail the mighty state. Texas, our Texas. So mighty and so great. God bless Texas and keep it brave and strong. That's our our Texas song, so uh, that we that we sang it at some of the football games. So I, I would keep on with it, but I forgot the rest of it. So, uh, so I'll stop right there before y'all realize I'm getting kind of you know. I used to call people old people. They're old people, but now that I is one, I'm elderly. I'm, I'm elderly now. I'm, I'm not. I'm not old on it. So. Uh, uh, Pastor Charlie, when he comes back to Texas, we'll put him on the horse, but I'm going to get horse insurance, <laughs> extra insurance before I put him on there again on it. So great, great, great. Hey, I heard this story, this Texan. He went to Australia, and when he, when he got there, the people were waiting for him. He's there on business, and they said, we got a few, few days here before. We'll just show you around Australia. And, uh, first thing they said, said, did you see the, you notice our airport here? This is a great airport. Do you see the, the planes that we have? And the Texans said, oh, come on, give me a break. We got better airports, bigger airports, more airplanes in Texas than this little dinky 
airport does. You know, okay. Well, let me show you. Here's our oil wells. Look at these oil wells that we got here in Australia. And he said, what do you mean? Texas is the oil center of the world. And you, you don't have any oil, anything compared to what we've got at Texas. Well, let me show you some more. And they show him this ranch. And said, boy, isn't this ranch uh, something else here? And said, a ranch? This is nothing in Texas. I mean, we got big ranches. We got more cattle. We got more everything than this little dinky ranch you're talking about in Austin. Well, we'll show you the city. How do you like the, look at these skyscrapers. I said, you ever heard of Houston? You ever heard of Dallas? I mean, we've got skyscrapers and building that make these look like nothing and so they okay so they, they got in the car and went on towards their meeting and so forth and the Texan looked out and there was a herd of kangaroos that was running along and he looked at it and he was starting and he said what in the world is that and the Australian said y'all don't have grasshoppers in Texas uh, oh, hallelujah you got, you got your Bible? You got your Bible? All right, all right. Get your Bible Turn to uh, Luke 12, chapter 16th verse. This is a parable that the, the Lord Jesus Christ gave us. As you know a parable, we've got to interpret that parable. So, so Jesus, before he, he speaks this parable, he's talking about being a hypocrite. He's talking about fear. He's talking about covetous. And I think this, this parable kind of leads in and gives us some, some positive answers in that direction on it. So I'm, I'm going to read, I'll just go ahead and read the parable right quick. i got the New King James Version. It says, Then he spoke a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yield plentiful. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? He said, I do this, I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods, and I will say to my soul, so you have many good goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. And God said to him, fool. Everybody say, fool. fool. One more time, fool. He said, he said, said you're, you're, you're a fool. I'm not calling him a fool. Jesus is calling him a fool. But Jesus said to him, fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. First thing we need to see about this parable is it talks about a seed. Now, it doesn't actually say a seed. It says the ground of a certain man yielded plentiful. Well, it can't yield. It can't reap unless you do what? Plant. So it tells you there is a seed, and it tells you there is a ground, and it tells you if you'll sow it, God will grow it. And he sowed it, and sure enough, God grew it. Now, First thing, we got to determine what that seed is. And number two, we got to determine what that ground is. I mean, no, it's not talking. This is a parable. It means something is different than what it is. In other words, it's not a physical seed that you're planting green beans and you're putting it in a physical ground. Now, we know a little bit from, from Mark, the fourth chapter, where Jesus spoke on the, the subject of the sower sows the word, sows the seed. So he talks about they're sowing a seed into the ground, and then Jesus interprets that incredible uh, parable that he gave, and in the interpretation of the parable, he said the seed, now it doesn't mean that it is, the same seed here. There are a lot of seeds out there. I'm sowing the word. You can sow kindness. You can yeah. sow mercy. Uh, you, you can sow. You can sow hatefulness. You, you, you know. You can sow a lot of things. You can sow your money. You can. You different areas. And so we need to determine what this seed is. And in that parable of Jesus, the seed was the word, yeah. and the ground, according to Jesus, was the heart. Yeah. So the so he talks about sowing the seed into your heart. Now let me tell you what this seed is and what this ground is. This seed is sowing into the church or the kingdom of God 
are the advancement of the kingdom. Now that's what, and the seed, that the, that's the ground, and the seed is your money, your time, your talent, and your ability that you sow into your church, the kingdom, other people to bring them, help them grow in the things of God. And so what happens is this guy is sowing and now before he sows this time, he was already rich. A certain rich man sowed. So how did he get rich? He got rich by sowing and he got rich by what? Reaping. He sowed and he reaped and so now he's a certain rich man and he sows and this time he gets an incredible harvest that comes in. Incredible. And and he he really, 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 really gets blessed. Now let me tell you right quick is not only is he a sower but he's a tither. You say, well now wait a minute, wait a minute. I can see how he's a sower. I see that. But how are you getting tithing out of this? That, 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 that's not on there. On it. Well, here's the deal. You can't sow unless you tithe. That's right. Sowing is above your tithing. Tithing is not sowing. Tithing is paying. Yeah. Matthew 23, 23. Jesus said they paid their tithes. Amen. In, in Malachi 3, they robbed the tithe. Well, you can't rob something that is yours. See, my iPad here, I can't steal it. You know why I can't steal it? Because it's mine. But I can steal your iPad. I have the potential of stealing your iPad. So when it says you robbed from God, that tells you that it wasn't yours and it was God's and so you were paying for it. And now, now what you need to understand, this guy is a tither, this guy is a sower, and it's working. He's sowing it and God is growing it and my goodness, he's doing great. And notice this 17th verse, and he thought within himself saying, "Hmm, what shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, I will do this. I will build, I will pull down my barns, build greater and there I will store all my crops and all my goods on it. Now notice something here. He was thinking one way, and he changed his thinking. Isn't that right? Now, what, how was it, what was his original thought? What was his original thinking? His original thinking, if I will sow, then I will reap. He thought, if I sow, then God will grow it. Now, that's his original thinking. But then, all of a sudden, Somehow his thinking changed. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So his thinking was one way, and in his original thing, he thought a certain way, he believed a certain way, he spoke words a certain way, and his actions were a certain way. Now, now, now notice this. He changed his thinking, and when he changed his thinking, what happened? His words changed, his believing changed, and his action changed that began to take place in his life. So, so now how is his thinking changed? How did it think? And the, the abundance of his heart come out of his mouth. He began to think a different way. What caused him to think different? Stuff. Prosperity, blessings. It began to change the way he's thinking. Kind of like the story I heard, you know. The guy's talking to, got a meeting with his pastor and said, said, Pastor, you remember when I'd bring that $50 in, I was making $50 a week, I'd bring that $5 in every week? Pastor said, yeah, yeah, I remember that. He says, you remember when I started making 100 a week and I started bringing that $10 in every week? You remember that, Pat? He said, yeah, I remember that. You remember when I started making $500 a week 
And I'd bring that $50 in every week. Yeah, I remember that. Uh, I started making $1,000 a week. And you remember I'd bring that $100 in every week, every week. Every, yeah, I remember that. You know what I'm making now? I'm making $5,000 a week. Whoa. He said, do you know that? I said, no, I really didn't know that. He said, but here's what I want you to do. I want you to pray for me because at $500 every week, $500 every week, $500. I said, man, it's hard for me to write that check. You know, that's, that's a lot of money that I, every week I, I give. And, and he said, will you pray for me, Pastor? He said, yeah, give me a hand. Lord, I pray for my brother. I pray you lower his salary to $50 a week so he can bring his tithes into the storehouse Woo, 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 woo. Glory to God. Now, now notice, notice, that's kind of what happened to this guy. His mind began to think different, and he looked different. And this is very simple in, in Mark, the fourth chapter. It, it says that, that when they sowed the seed, the word went into the heart, and Satan came immediately to steal it. Hey, hey, this guy, Satan didn't steal the word. He got past that bunch. Then the second group, that they got past, it says persecution and affliction arise for the word's sake and they're offended and they endure for a while. Let me tell you something. Satan couldn't, didn't steal the word. Let me tell you something. Persecution and affliction, tribulation. He had some bad times. Some crops probably fell. But you know what? He kept sowing. He kept sowing, even though it was, even though he had that tribulation, even though he had persecution that rises for the word's sake. He kept sowing. Boy, he made it through. Now he's in the third group. He says, these are the ones that quit sowing. What was it? The cares of this world? The lust of other things? Well, that didn't hurt. The cares of this world didn't affect him. The lust of other things. Sweetie packed them, walking by, all dressed up and winking at him. It didn't bother him one bit. He just stayed so it could stay right on online. But the deceitful of riches came in and somebody say choke. choke. It began to choke the word. He had the word on the inside of him of sowing and reaping, but the word was choked on the inside of him and when it was choked he started thinking like the world and not like the Bible yeah. and he began to get confused about the situation now notice what it says and I pulled down my crop uh, uh, I will store all my crops and all my goods and I will say to my soul you have many goods laid up for many years take your ease eat, drink and be merry now notice this notice this <clears throat> he said, here's, here's the thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to store all of my crops and my goods. So he turned his crops into money, which produces goods. Well, what does that mean? That means his yacht in Santa Barbara, he's going to put it in storage. Yeah. 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 That's you know what that means? He's going to put his airplane in storage. You know what that means? That means he's going to put his is gold and silver in storage. He was going to store it all. All these goods that he got by sowing into the kingdom and advancing the kingdom that brought the blessings of God upon him. You know, you'd think he'd look at this thing and say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Just keep doing what I can. Just keep increasing my sowing increasing my weeping or my reaping and just keep on doing what I've been doing. And, but then he hit a point there and he got to thinking and he said, let, let me tell you, I'm going to take it easy. I want to just take it easy. Let me tell you something about taking it easy. Physically, you can take it easy. You can go on a vacation. You can get in your lazy boy. You can physically, but you never take it easy in the spirit realm. That's right. So I don't care if you go on a vacation, you still pray, you still read your Bible, you, still, you don't take it easy, you stay in there, you keep believing, give the Lord a big hand clap, amen? Yeah. On it. So, so you may be taking it easy in the natural, 
but you never take it easy in the spirit realm. That's where he started to go downhill. He took it easy in the spirit realm, and he came in, and the care of the, and, and the thievfulness of riches choked the word on the inside of him, and it began to fall out, fall. And so now notice what he's in. He said, I'm going to take it easy. This is his definition of taking it easy. I'm going to eat. Well, he was eating when he was in the kingdom. When he was sowing and reaping, he was eating. So what's he talking about eating? I'm thinking really eat. I'm fixing to become a glut and drink. I don't think he's talking about Dr. Pepper. He's thinking about, man, I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start drinking now. I'm gonna, and he says, I could be merry. Let me tell you something about the kingdom of God. I eat pretty good in the kingdom of God. I eat pretty good sowing, sowing. On it. I, I, I ain't missed too many meals unless I'm fasted oh, and drinking. You know, I, I drink, I, I got plenty of water, I got plenty of soda pop, I got plenty, you know, I drink pretty good. And in the kingdom of God, I get merry, I get drunk in the Holy Ghost. I mean, I, I can just get by myself, start praying. And, and, you know, the amazing thing about getting drunk in the Holy Ghost, I don't have a headache after, I don't feel, you know. And, and it's much cheaper, I noticed that, than other times, you know, cause money, feel bad, you know, this guy, this guy had everything going for him that, that, that he had and his thinking, and you know where, where his thinking was? His thinking was, I'm not having any fun. I'm sowing and reaping now, I'm going to quit doing that and have some fun. Now I can I can go in a different direction now that I got it made. And Jesus said, you know what? You are a fool. Now here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to give you two or three places in the Bible where people did exactly what this guy did. Then I'm going to give you a parable from the R.M. White translation. That's my Bible. That's my parable book. I just have one parable in it. So I'm, I'm going to give it to you here. And it's going to help us to understand this, this parable by me giving you a parable. And then if we have time at the end, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give a personal experience in my life that will explain what's taking place right here. And we're going to move this thing from the pages here and move it into me and you, okay? Where we can apply it. It's going to be one Powerful revelation. Don't want you to miss it on it. So, so here you, you can see plenty of people in the Bible. King Saul, he was small in his own eyes. Then he got rich. And what did he do when he got rich? First thing he did was quit sowing. God said, kill all the animals. Sow that into my kingdom. And he didn't do it. And what happened? He lied to Samuel. And what happened? He lost the kingship. You fool. Your soul is required of you. He quit sowing. God had blessed him. God had made him wealthy, and he quit sowing. There's a guy named Solomon. He, you know, he came to be king, said, I'm just a kid. I don't know my head from a hole in the ground. Uh, God said, I, I really need some help. I need some wisdom. If you'll just give me wisdom, God said, yeah, I'll give you wisdom. Not only I'll give you wisdom, but let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to make you the wealthiest man on the face of the earth. And sure enough, God gave him wisdom. God gave him, gave him the, the, the wealth and his wives. What got him? The lust of other things came in and choked the wisdom of the word. The very things he had written, he forgot it and it choked it. And you know what? His, his foreign wives turned his heart from God. The word was choked. You fool. You fool. Your soul's required of you. Hey, there's a guy in the New Testament. He was rich, he was young, he was a ruler, and he was a fool. What, 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 what happened? He came to Jesus. What must I do to inherit eternal life? You know, keep the, keep the command. I've done those, okay. He said, sell all you have, follow me. And he said, wait a minute, buddy. I work hard for that money. And he got, the Bible says he walked away grieved. What is he? 
according to Jesus. He's a fool. He's a fool. He's not a partner. God, Jesus said, come on, become a partner with me and labor with me. And he looked at his stuff and said, no, 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 no. And he became a fool. Right quick, here's the parable. There's a young lad named, named George. He was about uh, eight, nine, ten years old. Went to his daddy and said, daddy, daddy, will you build me a tree house? And daddy says, yeah, I'll build you a tree house. And so daddy goes and, and draws out the plans, everything, goes to the lumber yard, gets the nails, gets everything, starts building the tree house, and George is up on the uh, second story of the house playing video games and looking down at his daddy as he builds it. And so daddy builds it. He finally gets it built. He gets that thing built, and, and he says, uh, all right, George, it's ready. And George comes out, thank you, daddy, thank you, daddy, uh, for, the, for the tree house. And, and he's happy, daddy's happy. Well, down the street, there's another guy. He's from a kid. They're from southeast Texas. And his name's Billy Bob. And Billy Bob goes, he's about eight, nine years old or so, goes to Daddy and says, can you build me a, a tree house? Daddy, will you build me a tree house? And Daddy says, yeah. Yeah, I'll build you a tree house. And he says, come on, son, get here at the table and let's draw out the plans. And what do you think about where do you want to put the ladder going up? And Billy Bob, I want to put it over here. And Daddy said, no, why don't we put it here because it'll be easier to get the lumber up. And he said, oh, okay, Daddy. And he said, where are we going to do it? And they both help work together and draw out the plans for it. And they go to the, they figure out how much lumber. Let's see, let's go out and measure the tree, figure out how much lumber we got. They figure it out and said, now add this up, uh, Billy Bob. You think we'll need this amount of lumber? Yeah. I think that'll be enough, Dad. On it, they go to the lumber yard, buy it, come back, and together they build the tree house. And Billy Bob is so happy we built the tree house. And Billy Bob be there, and Daddy said, Now get the saw and saw it here. Let's see if you can nail that in, Billy Bob. And he nails it in. Now listen to me. Both of them got a tree house. Here's my point. Which one of those fathers is more like the heavenly father? Billy Bob. Billy Bob. Yes, yes, yes. Billy Bob is like, father is like the heavenly father. Why? God does not want to build the tree house by himself. God does not want you, Billy Bob, to build the tree house by himself. Are you following me? The Bible says we are labors together with God. Now notice, Billy Bob is a type of Christian. The, the father is a type of the heavenly father. The tree house is a type of prosperity and the advancement of the kingdom. You know how this church is here? Somebody labored together with God. Amen? Became a partner with God and somebody paid for that chair you're sitting in. They didn't pay for it. God didn't pay for it. Together they paid for the chair that you're setting in so that the kingdom of God can be advanced and can grow. I mean, no, we got more people in church this morning because we have chairs. If we didn't have any chairs, attendance would go down. So you have helped evangelize. You have helped cause the kingdom of God to grow by putting, by partnering with God. Now this fool, this fool, he partnered with God and advancing the kingdom. He would tithe, he would sow, and he would reap, and he was partnering with God. But then he quit partnering with God and he became a fool. He figured out the name of this message. Partner or fool. You and me are one 
of the other. Pastor, I get offended when people call me a fool. I don't believe in calling people fools. I don't believe in it. That's unscriptural. Jesus is. So you got to get mad at Jesus. You are either a partner or a fool. Every time you get blessed financially, you either become a partner with God, financing the kingdom of God, or you become a fool. There's no in between. Well, I'm kind of that way and I'm kind of that. No, 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 no. It's not kind of this way. It's not kind of that way. It's cut and dry. Either you're one or the other. There's no ifs. There's no ands about it. That's just the way, that's just the, way the game is played. Now, notice this. And I'm going to close here in just a minute. I want to give you a personal story that took place in my life and just share just a little bit more. You know, this guy owed me some money. And he owed it for several years, and he would pay a little dab and pay a little dab. And I never would bug him or, you know, I didn't want any strife or anything. And and so he comes to me and he says, Pastor, he says, uh, you know, I'd like to get this thing settled. And and I said, okay, whatever. He says, well, I got this stuff in this storage unit. It would be all right if I just give it all to you and just call it even. And I didn't even look at it or anything. I said, said whatever you want to do, you know, I don't, don't make me no different. He said, okay, I'll give you the key yeah, to the storage unit. And so, so anyway, I went to the storage unit, opened it up, and looked at it, and I thought, oh, it's going to cost me $200 to get rid of all this stuff. You know, it was just, it was just trash on it, as far as I'm concerned, in my pea brain. And so, anyway... I was talking to a guy in the church. This guy is not very spiritual. He might come to church 10, 12 times a, a year, and he talks a good talk, and he, he drinks and goes through women like Kleenexes. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, the guy is a hard-working guy, but, but uh, uh, he holds down a job. He ain't got no money. He works hard, but he don't have no money. His girls and drinking both take all of his money from him. On it. So, so, but anyway, he was at he, he was there before church one day, and I was talking to him. He said, hey, glad to see you in church, and so forth. And we got to talking, and and I, I told him, I said, yeah, I got some stuff in a storage unit there, and and I'm gonna have to get somebody to haul it all off and get rid of it. And he said, he said, well, let me look at it. You mind if I look at it? I said, no, here's the key. Go, go look at it on it. And he looked. He he call me up and he said, Pastor, I think I think I can sell that stuff. I think I could I think you got some value in that stuff. I said, You think I got some value in that stuff? He says, Yeah. And I said, Well here's the deal. You sell it and whatever you get for it, I'll give you half and I'll take half. He said, Okay, if you sell it for a hundred dollars, I'll get fifty dollars, you get fifty dollars. And we'll split it right down the middle. So he calls me the next day or so and he says, Pastor, I think I got this soul. I'm going to meet the guy uh, so-and-so time. I said, well, I got a meeting, but I'll be there, but I'll be late on it. So whatever, do whatever you want to. All right? And just, just feel free to do what you want. And so I come driving up, and this guy's got a stack of $100 bills, and he's counting it out to my buddy, my, my selling guy. And he's counting out these one and I'm kind of thinking... This guy, you know, my guy selling it, he's not very spiritual. And I'm thinking, I wonder if they're doing a drug deal or something, you know, <laughs> b- before, before, you know, I kind of almost just turned around that I better get out of here because the, the cops will all be pulling up here and here I am, part of some drug deal or something. Uh, oh, so, so anyway, so I kind of parked and was kind of watching them. I didn't want to get out and. So after they finished up, you know, I got my courage out and came over there, and and uh, he had this stack of one hundred dollar bills, and said, said I sold that stuff for for twenty eight hundred dollars. And I said, you did what? He said, yeah, I hope you're not mad that I I, I took twenty eight hundred dollars, and uh, and this guy, I don't know, why, I guess he's guilty because he never tithes or anything, and. 
He said, well, tell you the truth, Pastor. He said, said uh, uh, I'll just take 1000 and you take 1800 And I said, oh, you twisted my arm. Uh, it hurt. Whew. You twist my arm so hard, I'll just go ahead and take the $1,800 on it. So here I had $1,800 in my pocket I never dreamed of. I thought it was going to cost me a couple of hundred to, to get rid of it. And that guy didn't owe me no that, that much money. I mean, he didn't owe me no $1,800 on it. And so now my question is, is this, what I just said, is it a blessing from God? To me it is. It's a blessing to God. I mean, I got blessed by God. Well, what does that mean? That means I'm about to become a fool or a partner with God. There's no, no, no left, right, indifferent. I got blessed by God, just like this, this fool in this parable. He got blessed by God and he became a fool and not a partner. Hmm. That's a good word. So, well, Pastor, what do you do with that money? What do you do with that money? Well, I tithe and we, we, we have Christian camp. We're building a, a swimming pool, putting swimming pools in. We just signed the papers. But this was, this was a year, over last year. That was a year ago, over a year ago when that happened. So I put it in the... I forget five six hundred dollars in the in the swimming pool, and my wife took it and bought three or four kids uh, play paid for their for them going to camp. Well, what happened to the rest of the money? My wife ended up with that money, <laughs> and when my wife gets money, the money talks, yeah. and it says buy. Yeah. And where that money went, I have never figured out today where it went. But anyway, it went. I, it went into storage somewhere, somehow. It did. And, and, you know, you say, well, boy, you really sold a lot. Well, let me tell you something about that. If When we first opened the church and I had three screaming kids and we were barely paying our bills, barely making it, and something like this would have happened, I would have tithed, I would have sold, but not near 50, 60 percent. Are you following me? How come you did it now, not then? Well, my house is paid for, I'm older, and you know, I can afford to do this now. It's not, it, wasn't, it wasn't a great hurt to me, you know, by sowing and doing that much. Now, back when I had three screaming kids and opened the church and wondering how, you know, if I would have tithed on it and gave a couple of hundred dollars, it would have hurt me more then than it does now what I gave. I would have probably gave, sowed more then with the $200 than I did with this, this eight, $900, or whatever it was that, that I sowed. Are you following me on it? And so, so every time you get blessed... By God, you either become a partner or you become a fool. Now let me let me read the rest of this parable. It says, it says, This night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So is he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. Let me tell you what that does not say. That does not say, it does not say, there to not lay up treasures for yourself on this earth. That's not what it says. Well, it sounds like it says. No, it says, who is, uh, so he who lays up treasures for himself and is not rich towards God. If you're rich towards God, you can lay up treasures for yourself right here on this earth. And it'll be protected by God. But you've got to be rich towards God. Well, can you give me more scripture to back that up? Yeah, I'll give you some right quick and we'll close. Here's the deal. There's a guy named Joseph. Had a dream. Interpreted for Pharaoh. Had a dream. He interpreted it. Be seven good years. Be seven bad years. What did he do? He stored up in the good years for the bad years. Isn't that what he did? Amen. Some of you young people are not going to understand this, but I'll tell you anyway. One of these days, 
there's going to be some bad years. There's going to be some bad years. How do you know that? Because once you get older and you to live on this earth long enough, one of your major objectives every day is getting out of bed when you get old. I'm headed that way. Amen? It's a... And you can't understand that when you're young. So you store up when you're young for when you're not as productive. I'm not as productive now as I used to be. Are you following me? That's coming. So you store up for the days when you're not productive as you are now. Are you following me? Well, I, I see I see that one more right quick. Quick, the ant. It's in, in, in the book of Proverbs. It's a... <laughs> I hit something here. The, in East Texas, we got a bunch of ants, and they'll sting you. Y'all are blessed. I don't think y'all have those like here. And so, and it says for that ant to do what? Store up. It says for us to be like it. Let me give you another scripture right quick. A good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. How can you leave an inheritance to your children's children? Of course, it's talking about spiritual. It's talking about natural. On it, if you don't have anything stored up to leave to them, are you following me? Amen. And so the Bible is very simple. One or two things based upon this parable, based upon the Lord Jesus Christ. Either you are a partner or you are a fool. Bow your head, let's pray. Father, we bless you, we thank you. You're a mighty God. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. You never, never change. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. We bind up the deceitfulness of riches. We bind up the cares of this world. Father, we bind up the lust of other things. Father, we break it over our lives. Father, we ask you, Lord, to allow this word to go deep in our spirit. And Lord, we boldly proclaim this morning, this day, right now, that we're not going to be fools. We are going to be partners with God. Father, we're not going to build the kingdom of God by ourselves. Our Heavenly Father was not going to build the kingdom of God by himself. Father, we thank you that we are laborers together with him. And Father, we want to be a financial partner with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And Father, we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done here on this earth. And Father, we thank you. We are partnering with you to bring your kingdom here on this earth. And Lord, we stand upon that and we believe it in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody shouted. Amen, amen, amen. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give him hand clap. Give him hand clap. Glory and honor and praise to the mighty name of Jesus. Woo, woo, woo. Glory to God. Right quick, right quick, right quick. Just give me just a few minutes, just a few minutes, just, just three minutes. Give me three minutes right quick. What do you have to do to go to heaven? How do you go to heaven? You know, I ask people this all the time. And you know what most of them say? Well, if you're a pretty good person, yeah. you'll probably go to heaven, not in the Bible. Yeah. Some of them say, well, if you're a morally sound person, you didn't really kill nobody or anything, you'll probably go to heaven. You know what? That's not in the Bible. Some of them tell you, if you go to church, you'll probably go to heaven, not in the Bible. Sometimes they'll, they'll say things, things like, well, I, you know, I read my Bible. You know, if you read your Bible, that doesn't say you're going to go to heaven. Yeah. On it. Well, how in the world do you go to heaven? This is my idea. This is Jesus' idea. This is what Jesus said. He said this, except a man be born again, he'll not see heaven, he'll not enter in heaven, he'll not go into heaven. That's what Jesus said. You've got to be born again. If you're not born again, you don't go. If you get born again, you get to go to heaven. You say, well, what does being born again mean? It means you've got a spirit on the inside of you. When you're born, you're born into death. And that spirit can be born again with the very nature of Almighty God. You say, holy Toledo, that's incredible. How do you do that? Well, the Bible says, with the heart man believes unto righteousness. Amen. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, if you'll confess Jesus as your Lord, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Amen. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Your sins... The sins of the world has been forgiven. They have all 
been forgiven. The Bible says the grace of God has appeared to all men. Now follow me. But you got to receive it. It's already been done. Even in the natural. If the President of the United States pardons a criminal that's in jail, he's a convicted criminal in jail, could even be a murderer, and the President of the United States pardon them of that crime, you know what? They don't leave until they sign a piece of paper saying, I accept this pardon. If they won't sign it, don't matter what the President of the United States did, don't know, matter what the Supreme Court says, doesn't matter what anybody says, you know what? You got to sign the paper. You've got to accept it. If they won't accept the pardon, they stay in jail. Jesus has paid for your sins. Incredible. He's paid the price. Here's the deal. Somebody is going to pay for your sins. It's either going to be you or it's going to be Jesus. You get to decide whether you're going to pay for the price for your sins or Jesus. Well, I'm a big boy. I need to, you know, I've sinned. I need to pay for my sins. What's the price? How much is it going to cost me? Etern eternity. Eternal separation from God, which is known as hell. Mm -mm -mm. But it doesn't have to be that way. Jesus has paid the price for your sins. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to count to three and I'm going to shout hallelujah. And when I do, if you're here and you say, Pastor, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I don't want to pay for my sins. And Jesus has already paid for them. I want to accept what he's done for us. He went to the cross. He died. He was buried. He was raised from the dead. Went into the holies of holies. Offered his blood as a sacrifice for your sins. I want to accept that sacrifice. I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life. I'm going to count to three. Shout hallelujah. If that's you, you want to make Jesus as the Lord of your life, I want you just boldly to lift your hands and raise it towards God. Uh, somebody said, well, I've done that before, you know, but I did something, did something horrible. What'd you do? I backslid. Backslid's horrible. It's like a dog puking and going back and eating his own puke. It's like a, it's like a pig that you clean up and then he goes wallowing back in the mud. That's a horrible thing, but wait a minute. I got some good news for you. The Bible says if you'll confess your sin, be faithful and just, forgive your sin, cleanse you from all unrighteousness. What does that mean? That means you can start over even though you're backslid. You can, there's even a parable in the Bible about the prodigal son. He came back and his daddy hugged him and killed the fatted calf and he became his, his rightful position as a son. Even though he messed up that bad, he came right back into the kingdom. God started all over. So here's the deal. I'm going to count to three. Shout hallelujah. If you're here and you're backslidden or you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life, won't you just boldly raise your hand high? Somebody said, well, I might, I'm raising my hand. Somebody might see me and I'll be embarrassed. I'd rather go to heaven embarrassed than go to hell not embarrassed amen everybody bow your head nobody looking around bow your head bow your head I'm going to count to three you're going to shout hallelujah you're here you say pastor pastor I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life I want you just to raise your hand you say I want to get right I messed up I know I messed up but I'm not going to do that no more with the help of the Lord. I can't do it on my own I'm making a fresh start right here this morning today one two, three, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here? Anybody here say, I want to make Jesus the Lord of my life? Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. See, hand, see one hand. I want to make, say, I back to the seat, two hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. All right, put your hands down. Everybody look up at me. Everybody stand up right quick. We're going to say a quick prayer right now. Say it after me. This is sometimes known as the sinner's prayer. What are we going to do in this prayer? We're going to make Jesus the Lord of our life. We're going to confess him as Lord. So I want everybody here just to repeat after me, especially those that raise their hand. I want you to really pray it. Believe it. Say with me, Heavenly Father, I thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that has cleansed me from all unrighteousness. And Father, this morning, 
I boldly proclaim Jesus as my Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Father, I thank you. I'm a child of the living God. I have eternal life. I'm going to spend my life in heaven. I'm going to walk on streets of gold. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. You loved us so much that you sent your Son to pay for our sins. And Lord, I give you all glory and I give you all honor and I thank you and believe it in Jesus' name. Everybody shouted, Amen. 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 Glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. You raised your hand. I want you to find somebody and say, I'm making Jesus the Lord of my life. I'm making Jesus the Lord of my life. Don't leave yourself You're this place without confessing it Amen. to somebody else. Hallelujah. Let's let Pastor Bob know how much we appreciate that word. Listen, uh, Pastor Jerry, if you raise your hand um, uh, and receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want you, Pastor, they can't see you. <laughs> I want you to see this man right here and his precious wife, Sandy. They've got some materials that is of utmost important that you get in your hand. Again, let's let Pastor Bob know how much we appreciate that word. 